Since his introduction in 1962's Amazing Fantasy issue number 15, the old webheads faced off with quite a few villains that have sort of faded into obscurity, such as Will-o'-the-Wisps, Carrion, Big Wheel, Stiltman, Scream, Kangaroo, Looter, and Vermin, just to name a few. But these guys have fallen into obscurity for a reason. For the most part, they're either not all that menacing, we're looking at you, Stiltman, or are kind of just a knockoff of another villain in Spidey's rogues gallery, like how Scream is just another Venom symbiote, as if Venom and Carnage weren't enough by themselves. There's another villain, though, one who's often mocked despite the fact that he's really dangerous. And of course, I'm talking about none other than The Spot. Okay, so his costume leaves a little to be desired, although I will say that the minimalist design can work depending on who's drawing him. And his name sounds more like that of a Dalmatian than that of a bloodthirsty criminal who could tear Spidey to shreds. But when you really look at his power sets, you start to see that he should be ranked way higher than he actually is among the pantheon of villains in the Marvel Universe. I mean, way higher than a wrinkly old guy in a set of green wings or an angry Russian dude in rhino armor. Heck, he might even be more dangerous than the Green Goblin and Doc Ock, at least in terms of sheer power. So first off, for all you non-spot aficionados, a bit of a history lesson. First appearing in Spectacular Spider-Man issue number 97, Dr. Jonathan Owen was working as a research scientist for Wilson Fisk, otherwise known as the Deadly Kingpin. Fisk tasked Owen with creating a new supervillain to combat the superhero duo of Cloak and Dagger. So, naturally, Owen turned to Cloak's ability to teleport via trans-dimensional portals. Owen was able to reproduce this with his machines, opening his first portal. He stepped through and found himself in some otherworldly place, which became known as the Spotted Dimension. He rushed back through, but found that the spots of said dimension had morphed onto his body, leaving him with portable portals on his person at all times. That's right, this guy has tears in the fabric of space-time on his chest. Generally, one is considered to be extremely dangerous, so having an unlimited number of them spread across his body says a lot. And he can replicate them at any time, going wherever he wants, whenever he wants to be there. And since the space-time ruptures are on his body and can be moved at will, it's nearly impossible for Spidey to lay a finger on him. If Spidey is about to land a blow on Spot's jaw, then Owen can just move one of the spots to the intended point of impact, and Spider-Man's hand will pass harmlessly through, being moved anywhere. This can easily make up for his lack of fighting skills given enough practice. Oh, and let's not forget his PhD, which, while not necessarily qualifying him as a genius on Doc Ock's or even Spidey's level, that can put him leagues ahead of guys like Sandman, Rhino, and Electro. This also means that he's well equipped to handle his power set, no matter how crazy it is, and it falls into his field of study. And that's not all. Remember how I said Owen got his powers by trying to replicate those of Cloak? Well, Cloak is powered by something known as the Dark Force Dimension, which is a little too complicated to fully explain here. But in very simplified terms, it's one of those many extra-dimensional forces that exist in the Marvel Universe with very ill-defined limits. But for the most part, the Dark Force Dimension has been shown to either allow for the creation and usage of portals, like Spot and Cloak, or for manipulation of constructs, in the case of characters like Blackout, who has been a villain to multiple Marvel heroes such as Nova. If Spot could find a way to harness all of these abilities, then his powers are potentially limitless. Of course, he might not be able to do so as he gets his powers from the Spotted Dimension, which is slightly different, in which case, this part of the argument would be void. I feel like this is one of those things where it's really just up to the individual writer and what they want to do with this character. If you're still not convinced though, let's take a look at Amazing Spider-Man issue number 589, which was written by Fred Van Lente and features pencils by Paolo Sikira. The issue features a pretty standard story of Spider-Man dealing with some Russian mobsters. The Spot returns after becoming trapped in his own spots during the events of the supervillain team-up Modoc's Eleven miniseries and finds out that his son was shot and critically injured by one of the mobsters. So he seeks revenge. He tears through the guards, killing each and every one in brutal fashion, looking for the boss, Dmitry Ivankov. Spider-Man even muses how Spot's powers could make him an unstoppable assassin, and he talks about just how disorienting a fight with Owen can really be, while also admitting that since Spot's attacks start in another dimension, it can be difficult for Spider-Sense to even detect them. 
In the end, it appears that Spot has really just gone insane, riding only in circles after being trapped in the spotted dimension for too long. But perhaps that was just enough to push him over the edge and make him a truly deadly foe for Spider-Man. So I think so far we've made a pretty good argument for Spot being more powerful than most of the villains from the upper echelons of the rogues gallery, but there's still one villain that matches all of the powers we've already gone over for Spot, Mr. Negative. Now, while I prefer to stick with the traditional 616 universe, most of you are probably most familiar with Mr. Negative from the Spider-Man PS4 game, and his powers are pretty much showcased in the same way, albeit without the Dark Force Dimension explanation. Anyway, Mr. Negative, the corrupted identity of Martin Lee, does in fact get his abilities from the Dark Force Dimension and has the potential to reach the same limits as Spot, although he isn't really shown to harness the teleportation abilities. Generally, he just uses constructs made from the Dark Force Dimension. He also has access to the Light Force Dimension, which is explained in even more vague terms than the Dark Force Dimension, but it would seemingly give him a leg up on his spotted competition. But don't count Dr. Owen out just yet, because he's got one more trick up his sleeve. Now, in my research for this video, I didn't find any actual examples of him doing this, but that doesn't mean he couldn't. Since Spot can make his little portals appear anywhere in the world, therefore causing a rupture in space-time around them, why couldn't he just do that in, say, someone's brain? Or their stomach? Or their heart? It's not exactly pleasant to think about, but it would hypothetically be an instant KO. An enemy could be killed in an instant with just a simple thought from Spot. Or he could just teleport them into the heart of the sun. Or he could split them in half by porting just one side of the body away. If done correctly, he could even create an atomic explosion by porting one person into something else. Two sets of atoms would exist in the same place, collide, and then he could wipe out an entire city by turning his enemy's body into a bomb. Now, has he done any of this? No, of course not. And in all honesty, he probably never will. He has been relegated to the land of villainous losers by the head honchos at Marvel. But the point is, when stacked up against every other regular Spider-Man villain, Spot easily has the potential to be the most powerful. Maybe one day, Marvel will even give him the spotlight he deserves and move him out of the loser zone. Anyway, that's all for now, so go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, and all that jazz. I'm trying to get to 200 subscribers by the end of June, that'll be the one year anniversary of the channel, so it would be really great if you could give the red button a little tap on your way out. Thanks for watching, and have a great day, everybody.